19th century man thought he took first photos of stars. Scientists uncovered his trick. During the early days when photography was newly invented, it was anyone's game. The medium was a fresh frontier, ripe for innovating, and as far as best practices that every photographer should know went, the rule book was still being written. The creative opportunities that cameras presented attracted amateur artists and professionals alike. Many creatives who'd spent their lives honing their skills in other areas, like literature and painting, dipped their toes in photography's waters. While some of these experiments went well, others were simply trial and error, and none were more interesting than the attempts made by one Swedish innovator. August Strindberg chased the truth of what it meant to be human. Born in January of 1849 in Stockholm, Sweden, the man was an acclaimed playwright, painter, novelist, and poet. He was fascinated by human experience and often drew on his own life to find meaning. Strindberg had a tumultuous personal life. During his formative years, he showed interest in sciences, arts, and religion, but he moved often and attended several schools, one of which was particularly harsh and scarred his mind well into adulthood. He later described his childhood as one overshadowed by emotional insecurity, poverty, religious fanaticism, and neglect, due possibly in part to the coldness his mother showed him, as he felt she resented his intellect. When Strindberg was 13, his mother died. Their hot and cold relationship carried on into her death. He grieved her briefly, but only for three months. Later on, however, he came to long for his loss and romanticized the idea of having a maternal presence in his life. Strindberg was also an innovator and experimenter. His unique writing methods gave rise to the modern era of Swedish literature, and he was never content to create art the same way as his contemporaries preferring instead to push boundaries. His paintings in particular were noted for their expressionism and reluctance to stay within the confines of visual reality. While many of his peers painted true-to-life images, Strindberg, who was friends with the likes of Edvard Munch, did not. Rather, he chose to paint only when he was feeling strongly emotional. The results were stormy landscapes, often of the ocean, clouds, or craggy hills, and were later regarded as some of the most original art produced in the 19th century. In the 1890s, Strindberg became interested in photography. To save his talent as a writer, he began taking self-portraits and photographs of his friends and children. For a while, he was content with producing formal seated portraits in the style of the time, but Strindberg wanted as few intermediaries as possible between the object being photographed and the photographic emulsion. He saw lenses as obstructions that would distort the true nature of what was photographed. In his mind, even the lens in the human eye was faulty. At first, Strindberg ventured out from lens photography into the realm of pinhole cameras and photograms. Pinhole cameras worked by allowing light to reach an emulsion directly through a tiny hole in the side of an otherwise light-proof container. It wasn't good enough, though. In his everlasting search for immediacy and authenticity, he deemed the pinhole cameras too fiddly and complex, requiring too much manipulation with a process that was too easy to mess it up. So Strindberg sought out to try something he'd never done before. In the winter of 1893, he hiked out to a clear hill under a starry sky with a tub of developer and several fresh emulsion plates. There, he removed the plates from their light protective covering and laid them face up in the tub of developer so that they could both expose and be developed all at once. After some time, he recovered them and brought them back to his study. To anyone but Strindberg, this seemed like a bad idea. At best, the plates should develop blank. Either it would be too dark for any light to impact the plate, or with no lens to focus the light, any light presence would affect the entire plate simultaneously. Strindberg was undeterred, though. When he pulled the plates out of the developer, they were covered with little sparkles and specks and blotches, which surprisingly mirrored the constellations and nebulas seen in a night sky. He was delighted and proud. I have worked like a devil and have traced the movements of the moon and the real appearance of the firmament on a laid-out photographic plate, independent from our misleading eye," he wrote to a friend. For the next 19 years until he died, Strindberg maintained the belief that he'd discovered something groundbreaking in what he called his celestographs. 
After his death, researchers confirmed that the images were simply chemograms, a result of developer chemicals themselves reacting with the photographic plates. As years passed, the plates continued to develop and the chemical stains morphed larger. It was apparent that the nebulas and galaxies seen on the plates were developer errors. Or, in some cases, residual fingerprints from Strindberg, whose oils had affected the emulsion. Where are the celestrographs now? They can be viewed online, along with Strindberg's notes on their backs, through the National Library of Sweden's Flickr archive. As far as the physical plates themselves, though, no one knows where they are. They've gone missing for now. However, until the celestrographs turn up again, Strindberg left plenty of other work behind to enjoy. He was a much better writer and painter than he was a photographer. But sometimes, artists just have to try new things and see what happens.